in Macedonia, the we document comes in. Line 16.10, we saw the vision, we immediately tried to go to Macedonia. Feeling certain the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to us. So after sailing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothrace. On the next day, we came to Neapolis. Look at this now. The tone of this is what? 180 degrees different, even right from the start. It's down to earth. It's straightforward. You know what I mean? First person plural. It's, the narration is in the we form, something of what you would have had in the pseudo-Clementines, the reports uh, that uh, Clement was asked to send to Jerusalem are always in the we form. And th prior to this, Acts has been in the he, they form. Third person, singular and plural. Now it's in the first person plural. And prior to this, it hasn't been always very easy to credit everything. Almost everything in the we document, I think, is Incredible and believable. And I think everyone says, and we get the we document, alternates with the narrative. It's not always we all the way through, but most of the time. There has been absorbed or inserted here a travel diary from somebody, an authentic travel diary. I think that's what Acts was originally based on, this authentic travel diary, probably from Luke, which is where Luke got, uh, Luke's name became attached to this book. This is where the travel diary comes in. Usually the travel diary is simple, straightforward. We did this, we went here, when this happened, that happened, uh, these things occurred and we went on and so on. It's just a straightforward diary and I think it's, it's, it's authentic. And I think from here on in, you're on really solid ground here. Occasionally something odd occurs in the narration in when it moves over to he or they. But in the we, it's always totally, uh, totally authentic. So from now on, we're in the we document, and I think from now on, we're in very solid stuff. A lot of it. Um, so, uh, for instance, here, let's see. Um, well, they have trouble in this next place in Fiji. That's I've already skipped that. In Thessalonica, they go to the Jews synagogue. Uh, now, some of this is like in line 10 of 17 is in the uh, third person, he, they, but sometimes it goes back to the we form. I want to just skip the, um, I want to skip the uh, stuff at uh, um, uh, Ephesus, I'll come back to that next time, chapter 18 and 19. I want to go up to pick up this uh, last confrontation between Paul and James. We've got a little time for it before we leave, because most of this is about what's happening in the synagogues and, you know, um, adventures with um, different um, confrontations they have on their travels. Chapter 20, after the uproar, stopped Paul, embraced the disciples, and went to Macedonia. Uh, and then after staying three months, as he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia, a plot being made against him by the Jews. Now that's third person, you see. Uh, 16, Paul decided to sail past Ephesus so he might not lose time in Asia. For he was hurrying to be in Jerusalem by the time of Pentecost. Pentecost is the time, 50 days after Easter, in the Dead Sea Scrolls where the Jews meet, or rather the Dead Sea Scroll community meet uh, to renew the new covenant in the land of Damascus. So that's a total overlap here with the behavior of the early Christian community and the Dead Sea Scrolls community, which I think is extremely uh, telling. And uh, so he hurries past Ephesus because he doesn't want problems that he gets into there. And in 21, we're still on the way back to Jerusalem and now it's back to the we uh, narrative. It switches back and forth. We torn ourselves away from them and we sailed. Came to Kos the next day, rode from there, Patra, took a ship to Phoenicia, sighting Cyprus and leaving it behind. <coughs> we sailed to Syria, landed at Tyre. Look at how prosaic straightforward that is. That's definitely out of, a, out of a diary. Searching out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. And they said to Paul, by the Spirit, he's warned not to go up. I'll come back to that. I want to get up to this last confrontation before we quit today. In any case, after some problems in Caesarea that we'll come back to, we arrived in Jerusalem, 2117. 
You've heard this before, and all the brothers were glad to see us. And uh, on the next day, Paul went in with us to James. Us. And James is the hot shot, you see, again. And all the elders were there, and greeting them, and he told them one by one what God had worked among the Gentiles in their ministry, and they glorified God and said to him, However, you see, brothers, we have a problem. You see how many myriads of Jews there are who believe all zealots for the law. It's in the Greek, zelotai to nomen. All zealots for the law. Now we know what the zealot movement is. See, I think in Palestine this movement was the zealot movement. And overseas it was something else. And James is the spiritual leader of the zealot movement. I know it's tough to consider what all that means, but the scrolls have helped us because I think the scrolls are what I would call zealot as secret in literature, led by righteous teachers similar to a James type of person. And so you see, they have been told that you teach falling, and this is what the spies have told them, that you teach falling away from Moses, telling all the Jews among the Gentiles not to circumcise their children or to walk in, their, in our ways. Walk in our ways in the Dead Sea Scrolls all the time, it's a euphemism you walk in those way of perfection and so on. Well, what, what, what should we do? This is obviously James talking. A crowd will gather. They will hear that you have come. Now, I think this is totally authentic. Here. So, so here's what we suggest. To you. We've got four men here under a vow, a Nazarite vow, a temporary Nazarite oath. Take these men because you've raised money overseas. You have money. Be purified with them. Pay their expenses so that they can shave their heads. That's what happens after the Nazarite Oath, just like what people do after the Hajj in Islam. And uh, all may know that things that they have been told about you are not true, but that you yourself also regularly walk keeping the law. That you regularly walk keeping the law. So what's the issue? They've heard that he does it, that he preaches against the uh, um, circumcision, and uh, we've read his letters, we've looked at Acts. Those are true accusations. What would you do in this, in this situation? What would James do? Someone put that on him to show everyone that there's no truth in all these rumors that you are still law keeping. Well, Paul's got the answer, doesn't he? What's the answer? I'm a Jew to the Jew, a Greek to the Greek, a law keeper to the law keeper, a law breaker to the law breaker. I do whatever I have to do to win. It's in one Corinthians. He's not plus at all. He walks right in there and does it. And that provokes a riot. Now are the Jews right?